Timothy Dolan, the Archbishop of New York, said, I believe our Catholic school, schools are a pearl of great price, worth every drop of sweat and ounce of effort we are making on their behalf. At a time when even public schools across the country are struggling, we Catholic educators need to be bold in our thinking and daring in our actions as we look to the future. Monsignor John Cuddy Hall is the perfect example of something that has been worth every drop of sweat and every ounce of effort that was made for our students and for our church. Today's event represents who we are as a church and what we together can accomplish. If you will please stand for our gathering song and the procession. guests who are with us today. First, I would like to, to introduce our bishop, Bishop Gregory Hartmeyer. We are so pleased to have you with us. And the bishop who actually said yes when we said we wanted to do this building, and that's Bishop Boland. I'd also like to recognize Father McDonald, the pastor of St. Joseph's Catholic Church, as well as all the deanery priests and our special out of deanery or out of Macon priest, Father Justin, who's with us today. So Father David, Father Godfrey, Father McDonald, Father Justin, and our other diocesan guests. health 
reasons, Father, Father Cuddy could not be with us today, Monsignor Cuddy, but he does have a very special relative who has made the trip to Macon all the way from Connecticut. He kind of scoffed at our snow a little bit, and that's Michael Cuddy. in Connecticut, so we've had some interesting conversations comparing his school system to ours. Sister Rosemary Collins, our superintendent, sends her regrets. She had made plans to attend, but because of the weather change, was unable to be here today. The same goes true, holds true for two of our campaign chairs. John McGoldrick and Catherine Hutto were unable to come today, even though they certainly are here in spirit, if not in body. But Wendy Lockwood, one of our three campaign chairs, is here today. So we'd like to welcome Wendy and thank her for all the work she's done. And then to build a building takes a vision. It takes the money, but it also takes a vision. And Kevin Walsh and Kamal Azar definitely had the vision. So I would like to thank Kevin and Kamal for this. Thank you so much. But then it takes the ingenuity to make the vision happen. And that's where Chris R. Sheridan and company comes in. So today we have Chris Sheridan along with Randy Reed, who was the, and I always forget, the project manager. And Andy Franklin, I'm not sure is here, but Andy was the foreman on site. So Chris and Randy, thank you so much for being here today and for all you've done. And finally, I am not sure if we have representatives from the Lewis Foundation, but let me tell you just a little bit about that foundation. Dorothy Lewis was a longtime supporter of our school and of our church. And her support continues today through a foundation that she created, the Dorothy V. and Logan N. Lewis Foundation. The foundation continues to support Catholic education in the Macon Deanery, Sacred Heart, St. Peter Claver, Mount DeSales, and St. Joseph's School. In Macon, you're seeing two examples of the foundation at work, as Mount DeSales is building and we have built. So let's just send Dorothy a prayer of thanksgiving for what she's done and join me in applauding her and her husband for leaving funds for Catholic education. And at this time, we are going to call Bishop Hartmeyer, Bishop Boland, and Father McDonald up to cut the ribbon. Some 12 years after. 
marvelous facility has come about. And I'm most grateful to all of our benefactors who have made this possible. Our foundations, our loyal parishioners, our friends uh, from other churches, and those who love St. Joseph's School. I'm very, very grateful uh, for your generosity that has made this dream come true. I know that as uh, many of you, like myself, wondered if it ever would come about, but here it is, and we are most grateful to God and to all of you for making it possible. And now we'll continue with the Liturgy of the World. Brothers and sisters, listen to the words of the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize? Run so as to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. Thus I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and train it, for fear that, having, after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. Our responsorial psalm, the response is, we are his people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are. His people, the flock he tends. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. For he is good, the Lord, whose kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Good afternoon, everyone. On the way in, we sang that this is a holy place. And in just a few moments, I will take the holy water and bless this very special place, this gymnasium and classroom addition to St. Joseph's School. It's a holy place, but it's a fun place. It's a place where you will enjoy uh, your years here at St. Joseph's more than ever because you have a, a fun place uh, to, to compete, to, uh, to do things that you weren't able to do because we didn't have the space in which to do it. And you'll notice that our school's commitment to environmental stewardship is evident in the design of the gymnasium and we are very proud of that uh, because we care about the environment uh, and we care about the future uh, and those who will come after you. I'm sure that as the construction of the gym progressed over these past several months, this past year, the students here at St. Joe's could hardly contain themselves thinking about uh, with enthusiasm uh, how to uh, use this and how they will enjoy this and to be able to play sports and exercise uh, here in this in this new gymnasium. Some people might ask, well why do you bless a gym? What does that have to do with religion? Well I think you probably could tell me the answer. Um, because God created us as humans. He created us with a body and with a soul. 
And Jesus himself, as the Son of God, took on our humanity and gave it dignity. And the Catholic Church has always taught that the human body is good and holy. And therefore, physical exercise, which contributes to the well-being of the body and even the soul, is a good and holy thing. Pope Paul, John Paul II, blessed Pope John Paul II, who will be declared a saint in just two months, was probably the most, the most athletic pope and saint ever. John Paul II was an avid soccer player. He was a, a skier, a mountain climber, and a swimmer. The Catholic Church in our modern day has always been a great patron and promoter of sports. Catholic schools in the United States are known not only for their faith-based learning, but also for their strong sports programs. Our Catholic school, our high school in Augusta, Aquinas High School, had an undefeated football season this year and won the championship game in the Superdome in Atlanta. Physical, physical education is not optional. Even before you had this beautiful gymnasium, you had to have some kind of physical exercise that was a part of your curriculum. The church encourages organized sports because sports and exercise help us grow in the virtues of self-discipline, perseverance, teamwork, and respect for authority. You know who the most important person, the most important person on that field this Sunday at the Super Bowl, do you know who the most important person is on that field? The referee, absolutely. He can start and stop the game anytime he wants. And in just a week, the world will come together for the Winter Olympics. Sports can even build bridges of peace between people and countries and races. I encourage all of you, boys and girls, to get involved in the many sports programs here at St. Joseph's. We have a lot of teams and great coaches, and whether you are a great athlete or not, you will have a great time if you join a team. And so together with important weekly basketball and soccer and track and volleyball practices, we also need to fit in the most important practice of the week the practice of our faith and come to church each Sunday as a family. You see, we were created body and soul. And so if there's an imbalance in one or the other, something isn't right. And so we have to give equal time to our spiritual nature, our soul, our relationship with God, as much as we do improve and keep a healthy body. What a wonderful way to honor Monsignor Cuddy for all that he has done for St. Joseph's Parish for more than 30 years as pastor and the relationship that he has continued uh, through his years of retirement. And even today, even though he can't be with us today, I know he's thinking about us. He's thinking about you and he's thinking about this beautiful building that has become a reality instead of just a dream. And so we thank Monsignor Cuddy for his vision and for his dedication, for his commitment and his leadership here at St. Joe more, more than 30 years. And now Father McDonald and Father David and Father Godfrey, together with Dr. Uh, Haver Halaver Halaverty, uh, and all of the faculty and staff and, and the administration of this school 
have so much to be proud of, to be able to experience this day when we have come to dedicate, give thanks to God, and then forever enjoy this beautiful place that has been uh, made possible, as Father McDonald said, because of the benefactors, your parents, uh, alumni of St. Joseph, uh, and all of those who assisted in making this dream a reality. And so my thanks to the Lewis Foundation, Mr. Chris Sheridan's presence here, the architect, the builder, um, Paul Knott, the um, construction manager from the diocese, and, and all of those who designed this beautiful building, who built it, uh, and those now who will take care of it and keeping it in a wonderful condition for you to enjoy. You will find uses for this building that you would have never dreamed before because you just didn't have the space. But to have a stage here, to be able to have a floor made of material that you can use for basketball as well as for dances and chairs and dinners uh, makes St. Joseph Parish uh, even more attractive and more welcoming uh, to people and all kinds of new experiences. And so this is certainly a day of great joy. And thank goodness for uh, Bishop Bolin who said yes to this idea and what a pleasure it is for me to be here at its completion and its dedication. Uh, and so uh, thank you to all of those who have made this day possible. And please, boys and girls, be careful in this gym, okay? This is a fun place, but you can get hurt in here too if you don't follow the rules and listen to your coaches and your teachers. And of course, the other rooms that are here, the classrooms, uh, especially for the scouting program at St. Joe's is a great addition uh, to this parish community. And so again, my congratulations to you all Thank you for singing so beautifully to make this paraliturgy uh, even more special. And so in just a few moments, I'm going around and sprinkle. Now don't worry about the water, it's clean. <laughs> and it won't hurt the floor. Uh, and it'll eventually dry, so don't worry. <laughs> but it'll show you by an action, my presence here today and the blessing that we pronounced and the holy water that we will use that this is, in fact, a holy place. It's a part of the St. Joseph Parish community where all kinds of activities will take place here, and I hope that you will uh, enjoy them all and many, many more students after you. God bless you. Thank you for bringing this day uh, and making it a reality for all of us and for the future. God bless you. Thank you. 
contribute to leisure activities that renew the spirit and strengthen mind and body. Grant that all who meet here may find the enrichment of companionship and together offer you the praise that is your due. We ask this through Christ.
Byron Parks' uh, blessing and dismisses us. I want to thank everyone who worked so hard to make this program possible. Dr. Lavity, our uh, children, our choir, and we're very grateful that all of you have come here today. Uh, as you know, Catholic Schools Week this week has been an absolute disaster because of <laughs> the snow and the ice and this Tuesday for no reason whatsoever. And then it was Wednesday and then it was yesterday for no reason whatsoever. But uh, we extended the day today uh, for the children who are supposed to go home at 12 noon um, in order to have this rescheduled. But after the children had departed, we were supposed to have a wonderful luncheon for our teachers here at the school uh, in our social hall. So we had to cancel that as well. Uh, and we normally give our teachers uh, a gift at the appreciation dinner that we have here in Catholic Schools Week. So we were unable to do that, but we do have um, an example of it right here on the stage. Uh, and they did not all come in another disaster, so uh, <laughs> we will be getting those uh, a little bit later. But I would like to recognize uh, our administration and our teachers and our paraphros. And if you could stand so we could acknowledge you during this past schools week, and thank you so much for your hard work. and 
At this time, whoops. At this time, adults, you're certainly welcome to go visit the rest of the building and then stay for refreshments. Be our guest for as long as you'd like to be here after the priest and the bishops depart.